killing them all. Alright, you're clear. For I say throughout his eternity of torment, I say that he will see what a fool he has been. I say this day that I the living God do not call thee to even imitate or emulate the fools who have given themselves to death. For I say such ones think they are having fun, they do their little shows, they put on their little displays with their symbolism of death and all And you did it to him, Dad. Dad, Dad, Dad. Or Mom. Or Mom. Mom. To burn, to burn their sons in the fire. The fire, the fire of what? The fire of greed? The fire of bloodlust? The fire of pride? The fire of conquering king? And you know what? We have one, one, one. For all of our big war machines. That's other God, folks. This militarism is another God. And I don't care if you call it the VA. I still said it. I mean, all of this blood, thirsty, blood passion is another God. God does not call us to set ourselves up as the nation that we have, as God, who can judge other nations, who can dictate to other nations. And it all goes back to economic gain. It all goes back to the root of greed. And it all goes back to the root of the lust for power and world dominion. And you want to offer your son on that altar. Well, my son's joined the Marines. Well, my son's in the army. Well, my son's in hell. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. When this place shall no more be called Tophet or the Valley of Ben Hinnom, Valley of Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. And I will pour out and make void the counsel and the plans of the men of Judah and Jerusalem in this place. And I will cause their people to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of those who seek their lives and their dead bodies. I will give to be food for the birds of the air and for the beasts of the earth. God does not want his people to suffer. God will never do anything bad. God will never allow any harm to come upon Jerusalem. God will keep the apple of his eye forever. God will do this. God will do that. Well, you know what? God will do what the scriptures do. Because he told the prophet, go declare it. And why did he tell him, go declare it? He said, go declare it because I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Huh? I'm giving them warning. I'm giving them declaration. I'm giving them a show of what I'm going to do and an outright declaration of it if they will but pay heed. Huh? They won't pay heed. No more than this land will pay heed. But you know what? That does not do away with the prophet's commission. That does not do away with the fact that you need to warn the wicked doers, that you need to warn the evil, the less they could perish in their sins and their blood be required of you. We cannot cease in giving forth the counsel of God because men are refusing to pay heed. Because then the blood is upon them rather than upon us. So we must stay true unto God, stay true to what it is that he declares, and do just as this prophet did, declare it, because that is the that is the call of the prophet to declare the counsel of God. Now the false prophets go around and say, yea, there's peace and safety on every hand. There's great prosperity ahead. The economy is going to bloom up as never before. And you will pick tulips of prosperity and put them on your mantle. You might put them on your grave. Okay, going on and he says, and I will make this city and astonishment and a horror and a hissing and everyone who passes by will be horrified and will hiss in scorn because of all of its plagues and disasters. America! You're not opening your eyes. You're not looking at the fact that it's God who's sending the plagues and disasters. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and their daughters and they shall eat each one the flesh of his neighbor and friend 
in the siege and in the distress with which their enemies and those who seek their lives distress them. And then it says, and then you shall break the bottle in the sight of the men who accompany you and say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, even so will I break this people and this city as one breaks a potter's vessel so that it cannot be mended. Says men will bury in Tophet because there will be no other place for burial until there is no more room to bury. Thus will I do to this place, says the Lord, and to its inhabitants, and I will even make this city like Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem, the houses of the kings of Judah, which are defiled, shall be like the place of Tophet. Even all the houses upon whose roof, roofs incense has been burned to all the hosts of heaven, and drink offerings have been poured out to other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all its towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks, refusing to hear my word. So why is it that God is saying he will break this people? It is because they have stiffened their neck and refuse to listen, that is, pay heed and obey his word. Now you know we are living in a time when God is bringing the breaking, the shattering, the devastation, the despair, and how many are listening to him. That is, how many are paying heed, how many are repenting, how many are turning from the evil of their ways, how many are seeing that the plagues, the disasters, the calamities, the useless wars, the futility of offering your sons on the altar of militarism and getting nothing back but a body bag and a devastated corpse. How many are are seeing that yes indeed that is their sin how many are seeing that the blood of the innocents the babies aborted up to 60 million now that is crying out daily unto God is being heard by God how many are realizing that the sexual worship in this nation has taken us down to utter decay debauchery and defilement because we took up a God of the heathen how many are realizing that they are giving consent and permission to homosexuals to rape their own sons how many are realizing Realizing that they are giving consent to their own children to be raised up, to be perverts, to be under the wrath, the fury of God. How many are realizing that the economic decay, that the decline, that the ownership of even the land surfaced by foreign nations is because of multiplied transgressions. How many are turning from the wickedness of pride, turning from the evil of their own way and crying out unto God. How many are seeing that the devastation, the despair that is at hand and the breaking of God upon the land, upon the nation, is because they are the ones who have invited ruination, because they chose the way of damnation, they chose the way of destruction rather than the way of salvation. How many are understanding that they have scoffed and mocked the counsel of God, they've stoned the true prophets, they've sought to murder them, defile them, defame them, and completely eradicate them from the land. How many are understanding that they've paid millions and trillions of dollars to false prophets, to lying messengers, to tell them lies that will damn their own souls. How many are understanding that they are the ones who have grieved God, that they are the ones who have caused him to bring his breaking, to bring his hammer, to bring his wrath. How many are understanding that if they do not repent, they will perish and their generations likewise. How many are looking upon the state of decay, the state of debauchery and realizing they are the ones that added fuel to the fire. That is, they are the ones that added fuel to the fire because of their lack of respect and honoring God. Because they left off fearing God and they bowed down to the images, the idols of carnal men. They made men their heroes, their gods, their goddesses, and then worshiped the same. Now if you look upon the multiplied transgressions, the sins that mount up to God every day, it is time that God will break this people. I said it is time that God will break this people. I said it is time that God will break this people. Like it or not, love it or leave it, God will break this people.
I speak unto thee this day, and I say it is me, the living God, who is able, and it is me, the living God, who will bring down the proud. That is, it is me, the living God, who will break them apart. It is me, the living God, who will shatter them. It is me, the living God, who will bring them the devastation they are needy to receive. For I say, even I, the living God, who bring the hammer of my righteousness down, in my wrath, my fury, my indignation reveal, I say, there is no man that can stand against the same. And I say, even though the proud doers, the boasters, the high mighty think they can escape me, it is not true. For I say it is me, the living God, who can strike and strike and strike through phantom strikes when they do not even know that I am around. And I say it is me, the living God, who can come upon them with no warning at all, no preparation to resist me. For I say when I, the living God, am thoroughly angered and displeased as I am in this wicked generation, there are things I shall bring forth out of the store of my wrath that men have never seen. For I say it is me, the living God, who is the Almighty, and I say it is me, the living God, who shall bring men down. Therefore I say in a wicked, vile, a corrupted, and evil generation, do not even be amazed at what I shall do. For I say it is me, the living God, who shall bring forth the miracles of my wrath revealed upon the stubborn, the proud, the resistant, who must have their own way. And I say it is me, the living God, who shall thoroughly break and shatter them, because they've gone so far from me. And it is me, the living God, who will cause them to see once again that it is me who is the Almighty. I say you are living in a time when men are so vainly puffed up, so full of pride and arrogance, so full of themselves, they think they remain forever. That is, they think they can go on in their own headstrong ways, doing as they please, when they please, how they please, and somehow they get by. But I would ask thee what man is able to escape me, what man is able to walk afar off from me, and do the things that are right in his own eyes and not pay for the same. For I say, when a man will choose to oppose me, he is choosing to oppose the very way of life. Now I say, it is me, the living God, who does offer unto thee the way wherein you can be kept uplifted, directed, and guided by me. And it is me, the living God, who does intend that you would be coming forth, ever made glad for my way. But I say, when you grow proud, high-minded, and arrogant against me, and ever resistant towards the truth, what do you do? I say, you puff up in the arrogance of your own understanding, and there you remain. And I say that it takes the breaking that I, the living God, do send upon the proud to bring men down. Now I say, in the wickedness of the times, you will see that many have turned aside unto pride. That is, they have insulated themselves in pride. They have thought they remain forever, but it is not true. And I say, they have kept themselves from the purity of the truth. They have literally despised the same. But I say, it is me, the living God, who is well able to break, to bring down, to bring low, to shatter, to devastate, as I please. Therefore I say, when you see what it is that I do, I say, be thankful unto me.